as a Schedule 1 deduction. Possibly that's a different issue. We're talking here, though, about the Schedule A, where you can't deduct those items. So our co uh, customs duties cannot deduct federal, estate, and gift taxes. So remember, the estate is a whole kind of different animal, meaning we typically have an income tax. We don't tax people's assets. We tax them as they are earning the money that are accumulating the assets. And then when someone dies, however, we kind of switch that up and we say, now we're going we're gonna to tax their balance sheet, basically. And that's going to be an estate tax, or you might hear it called like a death tax. So, so that becomes a tricky, you know, business in and of it, in and of itself, where, where it kind of has implications on the federal income tax, but it also has a different kind of impact because it's going to be estate tax. Gift tax are tied into the estate tax, and you could have these on the federal level as well as the as the uh, state level. So typically not deductible. However, see line 16 later if you had uh, income in respect to a decedent. So certain state and local taxes, including tax on gasoline, car inspection fee, assessments for sidewalks, and other improvements to your property tax you paid for someone else, and license fees. So let's take a look at these. These are state and local taxes. So you might be saying, you know, these can get a little bit more confusing. So certain state and local taxes, including tax on gasoline, when you buy gas, there's typically a tax on the gas. And the idea of the tax on the gas is the people that actually use more gas are going to be using the, the roads, which were community property, and therefore they should be paying for more of the roads. So that would be quite tedious if we tried to calculate that and figure out how much of the gas would be, calc would be taxed. And so no car inspection fees, assessment for sidewalks and other improvements to your property, tax you paid for someone else, so you can't deduct someone else's tax, and license fees, for example, marriage, drivers, and pets. So, so if you have a marriage license and so on, can't typically deduct, deduct those. Foreign personal or real property taxes. So we're talking state and local taxes, not foreign uh, taxes. If you have foreign income, you have a whole a whole nother world of things to be looking into. That's a specialty area in and of itself, which will be dependent in part on whether we have like tax treaties and whatnot with uh, with the other people with the other countries, so that so that you can avoid hopefully some kind of double taxation situation. So line five, the deduction for state and local taxes is generally limited to ten thousand dollars, five thousand if filing married filing separately. This was put in place a few years ago, and it was actually an attempt to, I, I think, simplify the code and be a little bit more fair. And I'm someone that lives in California, so I'm actually being hurt by this uh, rule. But I think some states have kind of been taking advantage of the tax and being subsidizing subsidizing through uh, through the tax because obviously if you have a high income individual, then they're they're going to have high state taxes in places, especially with high cost of living like California uh, and New York, for example, and uh, and it seems that that's that's kind of subsidizing the cost of living to go up and so on. Uh, in those areas, so they actually capped it at uh, at the ten thousand. So you can't take more than uh, the ten thousand. That was a controversial issue. Uh, it's clearly it seems pretty clear to me that it's that that's going to be beneficial, or that that, that that's going to hurt more wealthy individuals, and it's possibly be beneficial to or not hurt at least uh, less uh, wealthy individuals you would think but in any case it's also a state thing so the states that have high cost of living areas obviously are arguing would argue against that